In 1996, Yahoo went public, valued the company at $848 million. Two years later, in 1998, it was valued at $40 billion. In 2000, the company reaches its peak valuation, which was $125 billion. And in July 2016, 22 years after it began, Yahoo took everybody by surprise and agreed to sell its core operating business to Verizon in what Forbes called the saddest $5 billion deal in tech history, putting an end to Yahoo's long struggle to remain as a standalone company. Verizon has agreed to buy Yahoo for a whopping $4.8 billion. The internet giant has been struggling to keep up with its competitors in search, social media, and video. To understand what's really happened, let's go back to the 90s where everything began. Yahoo was founded in 1994 by David Philo and Jerry Yang. They were electrical engineering students at Stanford University. It was originally formed with the intention of being a directory for the internet. What you have to know is you could fill an entire MBA course with case studies of all the strategic blunders Yahoo has made. I'll save you some student debt and give you the skinny right here. So in order to understand the rise and fall of Yahoo, we're going to break this video in three main parts the failure in the business strategy, the failure in acquisitions, and we will end the video with the missed opportunities. The failure in the business strategy. For many in the 1990s, this spunky little startup with the funny name was the internet. Hey buddy. Looking for these butt touchers? Ow. Oh. 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 Get email right on your homepage with the new yahoo.com. It began life as a web directory, manually curated and categorized by humans who were known simply as the surfers. Yahoo added news, sports, finance, email, shopping, classifieds, personals, games, travel, weather, maps, people search, celebrity chats, a kid-oriented version called Yahooligans, and an online magazine to its web directory. Their main goal was to provide everything on the net in one place. As the dominant web portal, money came easy for Yahoo. So they were focused on selling banner ads to companies to make money. People did start using it. And a couple months into it, after we had first started to organize these things, we probably had people from 40 different countries that were using it. Um, probably a couple thousand people a day. They never bothered to build a strong engineering culture as Facebook and Google did. Instead, they were focused on just hiring more salespeople to sell banner ads. We set about to commercialize the company off of the idea of continuing to allow users to access content for free, but then use that uh, use platform as a place where you could post up paying advertising. And what you have to know is that the idea of the hierarchical organization of websites within a directory is, therefore, the opposite of a search engine that would index the different web pages with a crawler and it explains exactly one of the biggest mistakes Yahoo did in 1998. In 1998, Yahoo was approached by two young Stanford PhD students to buy their search engine algorithm. Larry Page and Sergey Brin had created PageRank, a quick way to find the most relevant website for a given search query. Yahoo skipped out on buying it for $1 million, rationalizing that it would take people off of Yahoo's website while decreasing traffic and ad revenues. We saw Yahoo as a media company, and we saw the internet as a medium, and as a new medium. And um, I don't think people will believe this, but we never had doubt that advertising uh, would certainly fuel the initial growth of Yahoo. There was never a flicker of doubt in our minds that if Yahoo and other um, sites that were cropping up on the internet could do two things. One was attract users or an audience or viewers, call them what you will, and then retain them. Uh, advertisers uh, would flock. It didn't occur to Yahoo that doing what was best for users might ultimately be best for the company, or that Google might use this technology to, you know, compete with Yahoo. The Failure in Acquisitions Technology changes fast, and successful companies must leverage smart acquisitions in building for the future. Facebook bought Oculus Rift and Instagram, and Google bought companies like YouTube, 
DoubleClick, Boston Dynamics, and DeepMind to help flush out its strategy. Yahoo famously made two acquisitions in 1999 that is now ranked by Forbes as some of the worst internet acquisitions of all time. The first was a $4.58 billion deal for GeoCities, a site that enabled users to build their own personal websites. While GeoCities was a pioneer in this regard, it eventually was shuttered in 2009 after failing to deliver any value to Yahoo shareholders. The second was the famous $5.7 billion deal for Broadcast.com, an online television site that was founded by Mark Cuban. Perhaps way ahead of its time, internet connections were too slow in 1999 to run this type of video content off the web. Yahoo also bought Tumblr for $1.1 billion in 2013. While it's not ranked as one of the worst acquisitions of all time, it's not doing particularly well either. Acquired by Yahoo a little over a year after its 2004 launch, Flickr was the first great way to share photos on the net. But after co-founders Katerina Fake and Stuart Butterfield departed, their brainchild languished, giving Instagram the opportunity to be the defining photo-sharing service of the mobile age. Missed Opportunities As I said before, in 1998, Yahoo skipped out on buying Google for $1 million, rationalizing that it would take people off Yahoo's website while decreasing traffic and ad revenues. Even later on, when Google's search business was well established, Yahoo CEO Terry Simmel balked at Larry and Sergey's $1 billion asking prices. He would eventually agree to it, but by then it was too late. The Google guys had already decided to up their price to a heftier $3 billion. Around that time, Yahoo was turned down by a 22-year-old Mark Zuckerberg. Yahoo offered to buy Facebook for $1 billion, but Zuckerberg declined. This was a moment that billionaire Facebook investor Peter Thiel lauds as the major turning point for the company that allowed it to become the behemoth it is today. Zuckerberg's decision not to sell Facebook to early bidders has become legend in Silicon Valley. After he rejected a bid from Viacom, Yahoo offered to buy Facebook for a billion dollars in the summer of 2006. But, but it's not just the offers made that were missed opportunities. Yahoo also turned down a hostile takeover from Microsoft in 2008 for $44.6 billion that valued the company for far more than what it's worth today. We have heard that Microsoft has offered to buy Yahoo for over $44 billion. It seems like every blogger on the net has an opinion on the matter, but we wanted to ask the man on the street, should Yahoo accept the $44 billion offer from Microsoft? Sure, why not? Yes. Yeah, Yahoo doesn't really have anything on Google. They tried to switch it up and really get on top of their game, but they couldn't step it up enough. I think everybody's just, they're sticking with Google for right now, and I think that's a pretty good asking price. I think they should go for it. Yahoo's journey is much like a wave. Since its inception in 1994, the company showed a steep upward climb. After that, however, came the dot-com crash as the tech bubble burst and prices plummeted. Now we can argue that Yahoo did fare better than some of its contemporaries and competitors, many of whom were eviscerated in the dot-com crash. Months of speculation, Verizon finally announced its plans to buy internet giant Yahoo. Verizon has agreed to buy Yahoo for a whopping $4.8 billion. The internet giant has been struggling to keep up with its competitors in search, social media, and video. Yahoo will be integrated with AOL under Verizon. Jill Wagner. But in July 2016, Yahoo sells its core business to Verizon, putting an end to Yahoo's long struggle to remain as a standalone company. I hope you found this video interesting. If you are new to the channel, consider to subscribe and then hit the notification bell icon. Thanks for watching.